Okay. All good. Hey everybody, it's April 25th. You're here at the Chaos Weekly Community Call. Welcome, welcome, welcome to everybody. Um, good to see some folks that we've missed for a while. So welcome back. And yeah, good to see you everybody. Um, just a quick reminder for anyone who is watching this, this is our meeting where we just talk about general um, community things in chaos. Uh, everybody's welcome to join this meeting um, or of course watch the recordings that we always put on YouTube. Um, and just as another quick reminder is all of our chaos uh, meetings are under our chaos code of conduct. So keep that in mind as you interact with us, uh, either in chat, if you would like to do chat or verbally, if you're, if you've got a mic. So that being said, we can start doing stuff. Um, if you would like to add your name, the minutes are in the chat. So if you would like to add your name um, to the uh, attendee list, I did not put mine here. My neighbor is Peanut. I don't know if I've mentioned Peanut in the past, but he's like a 75 year old guy and his name is literally Peanut and that's what everybody calls him. So it's, it's like the weirdest thing. <laughs> but you always know who people are talking about because he's like the only peanut around just i feel like he should be in a tv show <laughs> the adventures of peanut yes oh. <laughs> subscribe immediately yes there is always stuff going on so keeps life interesting right um these are uh georg is like absolutely not nope <laughs> Not, not at all. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Just shut it down. I love it. Um, okay, so the first one is I just want to give everybody a heads up that on May 9th, um, that is it. That is a Tuesday. That is the day of the next chaos con, which is in conjunction with open source summit North America out in Vancouver. And it kind of conflicts with this meeting time anyway. So we were thinking that we will cancel this meeting, cancel the open office hours. Um, we are, I think, going to hold metrics models. That one will yeah. go on, and I need to add that back into the calendar because I had already pulled it off. That's okay. I just, you know, so many folks that join there are, I don't think, going to be in Vancouver. So it made sense to just continue that conversation. Yeah, and it is so early that, um, yeah, it's not really a conflict so much. So. Um, but the app ecosystem also will be canceled that day as well. So um, aside from metrics models, everything else is canceled. Um, you are all welcome to join virtually um, if you want. If you're not going to be out there, um, that's what I plan to do. And I know a, a lot of others are planning to do that as well. So we'll join virtually. We can hang out in, in the ChaosCon Slack channel that day and, and interact with folks who are maybe new to chaos. Um, just a quick uh, update. Matt, do you remember the numbers on that? Yeah, so I put it in Slack. It's um, from one of the channels. So in person, 37, and um, online, like 300 plus. Yeah. So, so I had told you all that the numbers were approaching 100. Do you remember that? But there was some miscount that was happening, like a double count somehow that was happening in the Cvent system. So that was corrected. And these numbers should be more accurate. So if you are joining virtually, um, it might be a lively conversation in that chaos con Slack channel. So it'd be great to just kind of um, have a good representation of folks who are already familiar with chaos in case there's questions or, um, you know, conversations that spark up there. So in 37 is much more in line with what we traditionally have. So I think that'll be helpful for the folks that are running the breakout sessions. Georg, I'm not gonna be there, but if you and I wanna, if you wanna connect again, just to kind of how we did stuff in Brussels, or you wanna try a different approach, totally cool. But I, I suspect that you might be the one that would kind of help <laughs> lead those breakout. You know what I mean? Just kind of organize the work for folks, if that's okay with you. Yes, I was mentally preparing for that okay. and i was thinking what be a, maybe today a good time during this meeting to go over the the schedule and what we have planned and see yeah. if we want to make any last minute changes yeah for sure 
Um, and then I have, you know, communicated with the LF. We can talk about this in that meeting too, but just communicated with the LF by saying, you know, for the online folks, there are going to be sessions where we're doing breakout work and we're just going to stop the, the, the stream. And they were completely fine with that. And Georg, maybe just put on your note too, just connect with the folks that are running the camera there and just tell them that. That was what they suggested. Just talk directly to them. Um, and I just was hoping somebody could confirm for me that um, it, that has registered that they could do both because you have to register for open source summit North America in order to register for ChaosCon. Um, so I just want to make sure that that part is free for both of those things for virtuals for virtual people. Does, does anybody know if that's the case? I don't know if that's the case is open source summit stream like can you register for that free? If you're virtual so i wasn't when i registered i wasn't sure if it's because i was like help plan helping plan and so like okay they didn't charge me for stuff so i didn't i don't know if it's true you know what i mean like i don't know if ever if i too i'll try i'll see i'll i haven't registered for anything they may and have i'll register for a co-host organizer person too though since you've been the contact so i don't know yeah. is yeah, somebody not, not sure. involved with chaos con planning it wants to just register through that process and let us know for sure if you're doing virtual, if you can do both sides for free. That'd be great. Okay, any other questions about this May 9th date? Or chaos gone, I guess. Cool. All right, let's go on. So this was a topic we had last week is, is Don on the call? I do not see Don. Okay. Do we want to continue com um, the conversation? Well, we didn't even start the conversation last time. Or do we want to wait for Don to be here since she was the one that primarily put this together? Um, it might make sense to wait for Don. Okay. And just, just for folks, if you do want to take a look at this document, um, this is going to just be like the one source of truth for chaos governance. I mean, it will have to go to the board and all of that. So um, you're welcome to take a look at it. And maybe we'll, we'll like Matt suggested, wait till Dawn Foster is here um, to give us more context around it and, okay, you know, backstory. If, if anybody would like to take a look at it and kind of read through it, particularly, you know, if you've been involved in the project for a while and you're feeling like what is described in the document doesn't necessarily reflect how things are done. You know, go ahead and make a comment. Or that you, you know, you have a proposed change in how things are done based on all of the years we've kind of been hanging out together in this project. That would be helpful too. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. If there's no other, nothing else to talk about with this for now. All good. Okay, um, I'm not sure who put this on, but if they want to yeah. bring that up, that was you, Matt. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I've been kind of trying to go through repositories, not like cleaning anything up without people's permission, um, but, as we finished up, as you know, the readmes, those are all squared away across the entire org. So that's all awesome. Um, I've been going through the contributing MD files, just taking a look at those along with the readmes, but I just wanted to get people's feedback. The contributing MD files in all of our um, repositories, the 40 some repositories, very, they very like wild, <laughs> widely, wildly, whatever. Like there, some some repositories don't have a contributing MD. So, for example, um, App Ecosystem doesn't have a contributing MD, and DEI doesn't have a contributing MD. Those are just examples. Um, some some contributing MDs are really focused on on software components. Some contributing MDs are really focused on 
anyway, if I felt like every repository I was looking at had a different contributing MD file or didn't have one at all. And yet we have in our templates on the website, a contrib contributing.md template, which is kind of ironic to me because, because <laughs> we have this one template and I don't, I don't really understand. So I don't know if people have thoughts on on this, how we might move forward if we just kind of shrug our shoulders and be like, well, they're all different. I'm not sure. So for the contributing files that I remember putting together, there were a few things we wanted to make sure to have included. The, the um, sign-off, I think, was necessary for all of them. Um, and that we have the pull request workflow. Other than that, um, I don't know if there's anything we had, at least from memory. I haven't looked at these in like two years. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, no, if no, there's no. anything else <laughs> we needed in there. So I do think there was some conversation, um, at least briefly before I think I started looking at these, the DCO for sure, because we definitely all have that. I think there was discussion about possibly pulling out the PR workflow and just pointing, you know, like doing an external point out to how to do a PR that we wouldn't maintain it in the, which makes sense. And I think GitHub has some nice guides, for example, on, on uh -huh. how to do that. Uh, yeah, you're, you're correct, Matt. We that was that was a discussion that was that was happening, and uh, I think you you summed it up uh, perfectly. So I I would say the uh, at a high level, we just kind of need the the basic contributing for chaos uh, because each of the working groups kind of works a little bit differently. Yep. So is there a can we define a mechanism for the working groups themselves to create contributing content where they need to, or? Like kind of ask the working groups like, hey, could you reflect on your contributing.md file and fix it as appropriate like that? Yeah, yeah, and maybe, uh, maybe we need to clarify that it's contributing to that working group and not contributing yeah. to uh, chaos as a whole. Okay. We also have some documents in the knowledge in the community knowledge base around contributing. So I don't know if that also muddies things. Could you bring some of those up? I'll bring up. I do think most of those are about kind of general GitHub high level kind of stuff. Or which we could just link to those documents or that process. Like how to contribute that. So if we have this, uh, okay. like the ways, um, but then we have like design, development, presentation, content, that kind of stuff. So I, I don't know how that fits with the repos. Uh, okay, so there's okay. <laughs> there's mm -hmm. somebody wants to poke around in that. Yeah. And then we also have um, sorry. I'm just pulling up the the template. The template. <laughs> and here's the template. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What's this? Point two. Okay. So this uh, mirrors this. Yes. That's where that's pulled. Okay. Got you. Yeah. Yep. So maybe if you, yeah, maybe. Uh, so rather than a GitHub link, we can link it to the website where this contributing right. section is. Because it, it is the same way. Right now, the link is pointing to the GitHub rather than a web page. 
Correct. And yeah. it could just point to the web page. I, yeah, I like that better because the web page will also have this stuff down here. Yes. I think the the difference is are we are we uh, if we're if we're talking about an actual template that someone is going to use, yeah, it should point to GitHub. If we're if we're just having a, a document that describes the process, sure. then uh, it should be displayed on the website. I suppose that that would be the distinction for me. But if it's a if it's a template, an actual document that we're expecting people to to copy and use in places, it, it should point to GitHub. Yep, that's that's a fair point. And because this is the similar conversation we were having with like the metrics template. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, so it does it. Um, it feels like if you go back to the template one, Elizabeth, and just click that here. So like this needs to be updated to just kind of highlight the DCO stuff, just point out to GitHub, right? This is on the GitHub actually. No, no, no. Like how to do a PR. Like this stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah, we just say follow the GitHub stuff. Okay. You know. Uh, can I can I make a proposal? Yeah, well, please. If <laughs> <laughs> could we could we put together a a temporary working group that could maybe sort out some of the uh, the knowledge base uh, community handbook issues? Maybe just a uh, have the working group run for a couple months and just do uh just go through and kind of clean up the documents, maybe build the documents we need and uh kind of do this this general work that that you've been you've been identifying the kind of some of the pain points in it. Uh could I propose that we like put together a temporary working group to like to maybe get this done? Yeah, that's a good idea. That meets weekly or whatever it might be. Yeah, not 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 a permanent working group, just something we can run for for two or three months and just uh, knock knock some of this out. That way we don't have to keep coming here and like getting stuck. Yeah, <laughs> which does seem to happen. And some of these are harder than others. Like the code of conduct wasn't that hard, but um, like this one is more difficult, and the readme is more difficult too. So yeah, I, I think that's a good idea. But, and it doesn't like go into common either, you know. Uh, how do people get involved with this group or do we wanna just put this here? People yeah, like, didn't just yeah. announce it on Slack. Yeah. Put my, put my name in it. Done, it's all you, Anand. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I've been reviewing it, so I, I'm already creating PR, but I haven't gone on the every piece. I have started reviewing it slowly, so. Ruth, Ruth suggested, I'll, I'd be happy to participate in that as well. You can, yeah, you can add me as well. Or I could add myself, I suppose. As a <laughs> Type these words for me. <laughs> <laughs> I beat myself. Right, that's a, that's a good so I'm good. I can, I can, I'll get it all done. <laughs> that's a good idea. And then, and Gilbert would like to join as well. That'd be awesome. We can divide and conquer then. Yeah. Um, do we want to, uh, when do we want to meet or do we want to do it async or what do we want to do? It's, it would probably be good to meet, to be honest. Um, we could use the, the web dev meeting. It's already in existence. Yeah. When is that? Is that Mondays? 
I'm not yeah, sure. I thought it took that off totally, didn't we? Well, it, it may not be on the calendar, but like it did, it had a time. Yeah, um, that might have gotten scooped up by somebody else, but okay, I'll, I'll make a Slack group with us and we can sort it out. The other, another potential option would be, um, I don't know how this would work, but opposite the badging meeting. True, I think that's an open slot. So 8.30 a.m. U.S. Central on Wednesdays. And then we can meet like every other week. I can type opposite badging. Mm -hmm. Gilbert, that, work, that works for me. Okay. So Kevin's a check. Yeah, and that works for me too. And I always like kind of having A shared time, kind of like what we do with Common and OSPO. Yeah. Yeah. The old the old web dev meeting was opposite uh, the uh, communications working group, so I I think the uh, Chaos Africa took over that time spot. Yeah. So, okay. But I I agree. I like the uh, the every other week and just. Bernard, does that work for you? It doesn't, but I'll make it happen. So, All right. <laughs> oh, sorry, Vinod. We're gonna put you a green check. It, it is a time I commute uh, back to the campus. So, but I'll commute a little later. So that's fine. okay. Well, we don't want to make you late to the, to, your, to the rest uh, of your stuff. Is that all right? No, that's fine. I'll work it out. No worries. Okay. Ruth, does that, Gilbert, does that work for you guys? Yeah, it works for me. Yay. And then Gilbert, just let us know in chat. He said, yeah. He said, yeah. Oh, he did? Yep. Okay. All right, look at that. Progress. Good Ooh, idea. All the way down. Okay. Done. All right. You want to go on to this metrics audit? I'm, I'm guessing that was you too, Matt. Yeah, it is. It's just, um, it's kind of what it, you can click on that. I haven't done anything yet. And I don't know, maybe this falls into the group we just talked about. Um, but I just, as we do metrics models, you know, sometimes I feel like we were developing metrics early in the chaos project that were essentially metrics models that we don't we didn't have the term metric model at the at that time, so they just were metrics. And it made me kind of reflect on is a model, I'm sorry, is a metric a potential candidate for a metric model? Like, should we categorize it as such? So the example um, that kind of spurred this was organizational influence. I think. So if I put this in the chat. Um, yeah, I know there are some uh, from common that are in the in the that were from evolution that got moved to common. might be candidates. So if you click on that link that I just put in the chat, like if you scroll down a little bit, just right there, like uh, above. Yeah. So I mean, these we're talking about pretty about bringing forward particular metrics as part of its implementation. Um, so it might just be worth kind of identifying which of our metrics might be candidates for metrics models. So if we go back to that spreadsheet, that was really what prompted this. And so I just thought we'd I could provide the metric name. I don't know if I need a link to the metric on the website, um, asking whether or not that metric is in the spreadsheet. I'm guessing they are, but it would probably be worth just double checking that, um, asking if each of the metrics follows the current template. Um, I'm guessing the majority do, but I'm also guessing a variety do not. Um, we have that data statement, you know, right below implementation, and we had suggested to move that to the bottom. And I don't think a lot of those are have been moved. 
uh, then the candidate for the metric model, that's column F, and then any just general formatting suggestions. So I thought it might be nice to just kind of systematically walk through our metrics that we have released and just do a clean cleanup on them as needed. And anything, any other columns that might be useful, this is just off the top of my head. So uh, I like the idea, but my question is like how it is different from the column we have in the spreadsheet last review date. Like for all the metrics, we have a column in the spreadsheet last review date. If you open the spreadsheet. Uh, yeah, that, uh, I know so what you're how, talking about. Yes. I think so like, this is going to be specifying <laughs> yeah so this is how we have been reviewing previous matrices and uh like uh we, okay this was reviewed in last august 2022 and we followed the checklist of all the metrics we have and yeah i i mean it's i just i think the spreadsheet that i have there is probably just formalizing a few mm. standard things as to what that review could be all right yeah, I was going to I was going to say the same thing. It, it seems like we're it's it's more about formalizing the process of auditing right. metrics and uh and giving more guidance on what that uh what that audit process looks like. Uh and I would agree that we have a, we actually have a we have a lot of metrics that are candidates for models. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of them. Uh uh Per the we we we've had some conversation about kind of what the definition of a metric is and what the definition of a model is. Uh, that that probably needs to be kind of uh, outlined a little bit better, uh, so that we can kind of so we can better make that distinction. When I was for what it's worth, when I was looking at metrics, it was usually if a bunch of metrics showed up in the implementation section, that was okay. kind of when it, you know, like, so if it's discussed early, like this metric is like this other one, like in the description or the objectives, I didn't have a weird sense at that point. Mm -hmm. It was when we were looking at the implementation part. I know some, some metrics do include other metrics in them. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think that's okay as long as the uh, as long as it's you know kind of a, a low metric count. If it's like two or three metrics that maybe come together to to inform this one metric, but uh, in other situations, when you get to three or four metrics informing it, it really is really is a model. Well, I can. I mean, for simplicity's sake, I could use something like. Remetrics just as a as an indicator to start the conversation, you know. Mm -hmm. But that wouldn't be in the implementation section. I don't think that would be that challenging. Matt, I have a, a quick question. Um, are there specific criteria that are needed to to include a metric in a model? And what I mean by that is, does it have to be something that can um, I'm thinking of sorry I'm thinking of like for compass purposes uh, for them to you know use that or validate that model do we have do we need to specify that this metric must be available in trace data or something like that or do we want to make that distinction at all you know what I'm saying so like with respect to metrics models what metrics can we include and should Correct. we should we not include metrics that haven't been defined by us or put like put them in a separate category or something. Um, no, I mean like so uh, like things that require uh, like well welcomingness. It requires like a you know a survey of some sort to get a to get a data point. Yeah. So do we want to like put that in a separate category of metrics models so that we could like would that be something that would show up on this spreadsheet? I guess so. Like if we don't, if it's a metric that cannot be um, obtained by trace data. It, it really can't be validated through like the oh, traditional software. Yeah. yeah. So like, or is there not a, do we not need to like make that check here? I guess is my question. I don't know that I would make that here. Okay. And maybe we would just put it in the model itself. Okay. Cause uh, as, if, as far as I understand, like this is the, the spreadsheet that's going to, after it, after a metric goes through all of these things, then yes, it's ready for 
um, any metric model that wants to use it? Um, this is honestly, this is to just clean up the giant list of metrics that we have. That's, okay. That's really what this is aimed at. Okay. So uh, I would suggest uh, rather than keeping a separate spreadsheet, we can create a tab in the existing spreadsheet so that we have one file for the audit in the same spreadsheet. Um, yeah, I mean, I can do that. That's easy enough. I haven't done, I haven't done anything in this one, so easy enough. And then just have this as like a check, yeah. check somewhere. Okay. Like that, this little list that you have here. Yep. Okay. So if the, if the decision is made that it's a candidate for a metric model, uh -huh. Uh, would we would we remove that as a metric? I think so. And then send the and and then basically ask the metric model working group to look at it. Yeah, and basic and probably yeah reformat it. Okay. What if so? What if we remove it as a metric, and the metrics model working group isn't interested in that as a model? Does it just uh? Would we basically be retiring a metric? Mm, no, we'll make them do it. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't know. Okay, just something to think about then. Yeah. Um, okay, so what? Uh like, I don't want to leave this all on your shoulders, Matt, to be the one to like, go through these. Um, how do you want to go forward with this? Well, let me just let me just start by kind of starting this process. I'm sure I'll find things that work and don't work. Okay. And actually, if I link it, if I put it on the spreadsheet tab, but not clean it up, that'll that will actually make it a little easier. Okay. Fair enough. Anything else we want to talk about before we move on? Okay, um, so last week, uh, Chaos Africa put on an extremely successful uh, first webinar for the open source series, and I was wondering if Ruth would want to give a quick update on how that went. Um okay yeah sure can you hear me yeah, yeah i'm kind of in the coffee shop so there's like some music around um i, I like how it is but said successful because <laughs> it, it wasn't so successful so um okay so we had um there's, there's a very funny story i'm going to share that happened uh but we we had the 869 people register and 65 persons showed up so for context the webinar was like um, it gets started in open source because we have realized that a lot of like um, Chaos Africa um, members were very new to open source, so it, it made sense to run a getting started in open source kind of um, you know as the first webinar for the series. Um, um, so since it was a webinar, I first um, forgot to enable chat for people. So when people joined um, the webinar, chat was disabled, and I spent 15 minutes trying to enable chats, and that didn't all work. And then secondly, something that happened was uh, when I was trying to like um, remind people to join the webinar, I copied the invites from my calendar, my Google calendar, and then people joined. And a lot of people joined in as Ruti Kega, so we had like 10 weeks in the webinar so i think clicking on my calendar link from slack made them join as me right so uh, when everybody was kind of like asking questions and then, then i saw like there were a lot of roots asking questions and i'm like i'm talking i'm not asking any questions right and and then we had someone that asked them like okay maybe because they joined from my my calendar link so they, they appeared as me so it was it was kind of chaotic, but it was successful in some way. Um, we had a lot of people that made their best contribution. We did, we did like something like um, a workshop session where people use first contributions to um, quickly make a quick um, add your name to the repo. And we had a lot of feedback from Twitter and even on the Slack. So 
um it's a monthly cadence so we'll have another one coming month in may and subsequently follow that so yeah it was successful partially so yeah yeah that's how that went I think that's awesome. And I personally love the fact that there would be 10 roots in there. I mean, how could that be better? That's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was telling Ruth earlier, like that is something I would never have thought of. And like, I would never have like thought that that would happen or even like enabling the chat. I would have just assumed that everything was enabled and, you know, working and all of that. So kudos to you, Ruth for just sorting it all out and figuring it out. I love that so much. You think on your feet very well. So, <laughs> so good, good for you. I think it's awesome. And then next month it'll just, you know, magically work. So it'll be fine. <laughs> I'll try to move it the next month. No, you're great. You're great. Um, any questions for Ruth on this? All right. Well, we'll go on. I'm really happy that you're doing that, Ruth, and um, we look forward to seeing more in the future and getting getting more folks getting their first contributions. That's really awesome. It's really, really awesome. Um, this is from Dawn. Let's click on it. Well, if I click on that, it'll open my whole Slack. So somebody else is going to have to click on that. I don't know where it goes. Tell me where it goes. It, goes, it just goes to a post that Dawn had put in, I think, in general um so let's see yeah see yeah no that's not gonna work all right <laughs> <laughs> i tried um so here i'll just I'll copy it and put it in the chat here next yeah, i'm in like 10 10 slacks yeah there's, there's a lot going on over there what was the po oh it's not terribly long Okay, so it says, some of you know that I'm also, this is from Don Foster, for anyone who's watching. Some of you know that I'm also a co-chair of a CNCF technical advisory group focused on contributor strategy. And in a recent meeting, we were talking about how maybe some chaos folks who are in community roles might be interested in joining us to provide resources and advice to CNCF projects. We don't talk much about metrics and the CNCF uses dev stats instead of chaos tools. But it's a great group if you're interested in getting more involved in contributor growth, project governance, and related community topics from a strategic perspective. The post below has more details about what to do and how to get involved if you're interested. Let's check it out. Here we go. Must know, is that, was that it? Must know resources for CNCF projects? Yeah. So it's this tag contributor strategy group. That's yep. What they're looking for for maybe some participation from chaos folks. Yep. That's how I understood it. Awesome. So if you think you might be interested in that, anybody, uh, take a look at this doc. We can we can also drop this in the minutes here. And I think reaching out to Don would probably be okay too. Yeah. If interested. Reach out to Don Foster. Awesome. Thank you, Don, wherever you are. We appreciate you. Um, just a couple more things. Um, well, I guess one more thing. I just wanted to let people know who are new to open source that um, All Things Open did a session earlier in the year uh, for Open Source 101, and they've just released all of the recordings from that. So it's just some nice resources for folks who are newish, uh, wanna take a look at this. It's got some good, you know, some good things in here. So there might be some, yeah, there's some really good stuff in here. So just take a look if you are interested in. Yeah, and Ruth, you can, I, that, I would love it if you sh shared that with Chaos Africa, that's perfect. Uh, okay, I think that's it. Um, well, we have seven minutes to do chaos con stuff. Um, so I'm guessing we should just touch base really quick on that. Yep, that works for me. I can stop the recording. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing. So if you're not on the chaos con planning committee, 